Hello everyone, welcome to my Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neuroscience and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neuroscience and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today let's talk about neurocognitive syndrome. This syndrome was identified based on the complex neural perspective. But before we get further on this, first let's see the manuals that I recommend to you today. The first is the principles of neuropsychology. The second is the fundamentals of human neuropsychology. The third is the neuropsychology handbook. The fourth is the handbook of clinical neuropsychology. The fifth is the neuropsychological assessment. And the sixth is the clinical neuropsychology. So, now let's see the neurocognitive psychopathological syndrome. So, first let's see the definition of neuropsychological syndrome. Neuropsychological syndromes are all the neurocognitive impairments that result from brain dysfunction, congenital or acquired, with profound impacts in mental health and daily life. Typically, these syndromes have severe impacts on memory, language and other neurocognitive processes. So, now let's look specifically to the neurocognitive syndrome. Neurocognitive syndrome is a set of neurocognitive symptoms that include symptoms in the executive functions, attention, memory and self-perception that are manifested psychologically and can be considered to a certain extent to the dysfunction of four major neuronal networks. So these neural networks are the following Frontoparietal Executive Network Salience Network Amygdaloid Hippocampal Memory Network and Default Mode Network So, when we look to the Frontoparietal Executive Network we see symptoms such as apathy, loss of focus, loss of planning and difficulties in the abstract abilities Also, we see difficulties in visual expression and problem solving and difficulties in mental imagery. In the salience network, we see difficulties in perform and task monitoring, salience confusion, difficulties in insight and emotion-based complex decisions. In the amygdaloid hippocampal memory network, we see hyperactivation of amygdala responses with extreme fear and stress. Also, we see memory perseveration and stagnation and stereotyped memory. So, problems in the default mode network result in difficulties in self-awareness, self-reflection, self-referencing and self-other discrimination. Also, social and emotional disinhibition and impaired social cognition. So, the neurocognitive syndrome must have several symptoms that typically are related with these neural networks. So, we have a, a model here that helps us to understand how the neurocognitive syndrome may be working in the brain. So, we have the top-down inputs, which also have the sensory and the limbic and the self-referential cognition. They all tend to be processed initially in the salience network. However, problems in weak salience mapping result in problems in impoverished cognition in the dorsal prefrontal cortex and deficits in self-referential mental activity, which typically is associated with the default mode network, impairments in the precuneus and impairments in the ventromedial prefrontal cortex and in the posterior cortex. So, as you are seeing here, this model helps us to understand how the neurocognitive syndrome may be developed in the brain. So, the neurocognitive syndrome seems to reflect the association of several psychological symptoms that are typically associated with different complex neural networks the default mode network, the frontoparietal network, the salience network and the amygdaloid hippocampal network. So, now let's look to the summary and the key points. 
we saw that the neurocognitive syndrome has several symptoms associated with several neural networks and these neural networks are extremely important in the cognitive and mental processing. These neural networks are the frontoparietal executive network, the salience network, amygdaloid hippocampal memory network and the default mode network. All these networks are extremely important in the mental processing and when there are impairments in these networks, these symptoms tend to be clustered together and tend to manifest in the flow of consciousness resulting in daily life impairments and difficulties in psychological well-being. So, this is just an introductory video to the Neurocognitive Syndrome and in the future we will take a more in-depth look in the Neurocognitive Syndrome, ok? So, stay tuned! Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme if you want to see the manuals and the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can use the comment section below to express your mind and to express your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all the things that you saw here. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neurosciences and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today's video is the last one regarding to the introduction of neuropsychological syndromes. Today, I will describe to you the last set of neuropsychological syndromes that were not described in the previous video. So, stay tuned! But first, let's take a look on the manuals that I recommend to you. The first is the principles of neuropsychology. The second is the fundamentals of human neuropsychology. The third is the neuropsychology handbook. The fourth is the Handbook of Clinical Neuropsychology, the second edition. The fifth is the Neuropsychological Assessment. And the sixth is the Clinical Neuropsychology. So, now let's take a brief look on the, the Executive Syndrome, which is one neuropsychological syndrome that is extremely important in neuropsychology. So first, let's look to the main definition of neuropsychological syndromes. Neuropsychological syndromes are all the neurocognitive impairments that result from brain dysfunction, congenital or acquired, with profound impact in mental health and daily life. Typically, these syndromes have severe impacts on memory, language, attention and other cognitive processes such as executive functions or even visual motor skills. So, the executive syndrome or executive dysfunction concerns a set of symptoms typically resulting from brain injury, covering the domain of cognition, emotion and behavior. This syndrome typically results in difficulties in cognitive flexibility, planning, abstract reasoning, impulse inhibition, motivation, decision making and emotion regulation. Executive dysfunction may be present in several psychopathologies, such as attention deficit hyperactivity, conduct disorder, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, schizophrenia, or even in physical health and in quality of life. As you can see here, there are several life domains that executive functions are extremely important to maintain a good psychological and good neuropsychological functioning. So, 
the aspect so the executive functions are the main neurocognitive functions that are extremely important to maintain a good mental health and adequate adaptation of daily life functioning as you can see here executive functions are extremely important in physical health in the quality of life in school readiness and school success job success marital harmony and public safety so as we saw earlier executive functions are a set of functions that coordinate the other neurocognitive processes okay so that's why that the executive dysfunction is a extremely severe syndrome that impairs cognitive flexibility planning and emotion regulation with severe impacts in psychological health and daily life functioning so now let's see the summary and the key points so executive dysfunction it's a broad syndrome that typically is associated with executive functions as we saw also uh, executive functions are associated with the frontal lobe functioning so that's why that when we think about executive dysfunction we think about that there is some impairments in the frontal lobe and as we saw the executive dysfunction shows some psychopathology which is present in other psychopathological conditions okay so this is just an introductory video about the executive dysfunction but in the future i will show to you more about this okay so stay tuned well it's all for today don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme if you want to see the manuals and the books that i recommend to you also if you like what i'm doing like share and subscribe this video also you can use the comment section below to express your mind and to express your thoughts let me know what you think about all of this Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.